In this video, I'll be showing you how to use these free open source VFX created by a user named Kajiro on GitHub. All of these assets can be found on GitHub and can be used in your projects. This is an example of what you'll be able to do. To be able to use those cool geometry VFX in any project that you might have, I'm going to be going through all of this. We're starting with the SDF samples project because it's already made in Unity 2021 and it already has some cool things included. Most importantly, the scope registry, which I'll go over how to use and add to any project. To get those cool geometry VFX, we're just copying over the custom shader folder from the testbed HDRP project. We'll hit some errors initially, but the scope registry will help us fix that. And then after that, I'll show you how to use the VFX with any 3D object and how the effectors work. To get the SDF sample project, go to the GitHub page and then click on code and download zip. Once you've downloaded and extracted that folder, go to Unity Hub, click on add project from disk, and add the project. So when you open up the SDF samples project, it should look like this by default. I've opened up the block scene and I'm going to move the game window down here so it's easier to see. By default, we have access to a couple cool VFX. I really like the Trails one. I think that looks awesome. I'm gonna move the console up here so it's easier to see for debugging, and I'm gonna move the project window to the top left and switch to a one column layout. To get these VFX working in your scene, go to the GitHub page and download the zip and extract the files. Go into that project's asset folder and copy the custom shaders folder into the project that we've been working with. Once we switch back to Unity, we'll see that it takes a little bit to load in the new assets. I'll try and open up one of the scenes that we just imported. Here we can see we have nothing going on and we have some errors. However, these errors don't actually stop us from being able to run our project because they're visual and they can make things a little bit harder to debug and figure out what's going on. In general, you want to start by looking at the project you're trying to import and look at the packages that it's using. This is where the scope registry comes in. To do that, we'll look at this project's packages and look at its manifest.json file and compare it to our own. The manifest.json file just has a list of all the packages in your project. The scoped registry is a section that you can copy and paste to any manifest.json and it gives you access to all the packages that Kajira has created and put on this registry. To look at our own manifest.json, I'll go into our project. And open it. Here we can see it's already got the scoped registry added and we have some packages. You can also view these packages in Unity by going to Window and Package Manager. I'm going to dock that up here. So here we see a much larger list of uninstalled packages, and it's cool that we just have access to these. I know that from looking at the projects, we're missing one called Danish Statues, which is just a good asset used for testing. It's just models of statues with normal maps. So I can install that here. And now if we go back and look at our manifest.json file, we can see that a line was added for the new package. And over here, I've opened up the other project's manifest.json file to compare. I can see that we need the noise shader package, and I'll try and add that through the package manager window. Going back to our project, we see that we now have the visual asset for the statue, but still nothing's happening when we run, and that has to do with the missing package. So I'll come to the Package Manager window and look through the packages that we have available because of the scope registry. So I'll install Noise Shader. And now when we try and run, we still don't see anything. This has to do with the version of Noise Shader being used. By default, the, the UI Package Manager will give you the most up-to-date version of the package that you want. But going back to the manifest.json file, 
we can see that it's using an older version. So I can just either change that in the UI or change that here in the text. Sometimes when you're adding and editing the packages, you have to restart the project in order to see the changes take effect. So I just restarted it, and now we have Noise Shader 1.0 installed with the option to update. And if we run, we can see our VFX working now. And the way that this effect works is all based on this effector object, which has a script on it and corresponds to a set of specific materials. So each one has its own material. So this effect is called the voxelizer. This one is called the spiralizer. And so each effect will have this effector object. And it usually has a list of target renderers. And in this list, you'll find the statue. And the mesh renderer has the statue material on it. In this case, it's called statue. But if we go back to voxelizer, and we click on this statue and look at its material, it's got a material that corresponds to the name of the effect. So some of them have that and some of them don't. So we'll focus on how to edit this voxelizer by adding our own model. So I found a model here on Mixamo and I'm gonna download and import this into my project and apply the VFX to this object. I'm gonna download and select FBX for Unity with skin and I'm not gonna worry about the other options. So let's disable the statue object and add in our own model. I have it saved here and I'm gonna drag that into the scene and rotate it so it's facing the camera. So right now we see no effect happening, so we'll go the effector, add to this list of target renderers, and give it the two that we need. This robot has two of them on it. It's got joints and surface, so let's drag those in. And we still don't see anything happening, so let's go over here and add the material and add it to surface. So now when we hit play, we see it taking effect on our own model. And we also see that it's using the normal map for the statue. So to fix issues like this and customize it more, let's duplicate the material we were working with and remove the normal map. So I'll select the material, Control D. Now we have a new material called Voxelizer 1. And let's get rid of the normal map by selecting that and setting it to none. And we'll change the color to something like red. Go back to our two objects. Select them both and drag the material on. So now when we play, the end result looks more normal. <laughs> and there we have our animated skin mesh renderer with these VFX working on it. Let's look at trying to take this effect setup and move it to another scene with the SDF VFX, which also have a little bit of post-processing in them. It'll make this look a lot nicer. So all we need is the effector, the model, and the timeline. Timeline has the animation clip that's moving the effector up and down. Let's copy those and open up the stickies VFX scene. And this is awesome. This is such a cool example of what you can do with the new uh, SDF bake tool. So let's paste in our setup, see what that looks like. Let's move it down a little bit and over. So the last thing I tried here is to go through uh, Window Utilities SDF Bake Tool and to try and pass in a mesh to use and edit the Stickies VFX. Didn't really work. I tried to drag in the surface mesh from the robot and bake that to an SDF asset and then I dragged that back in. Um, I know this tool is new and I was just reading about some updates that they made to it. So we'll try this with just a sphere 
and in the video here it doesn't really look right with the surface mesh. Here's an example with the SDF tool. Um, I just used a sphere mesh and baked that out. And then I went into the voxelizer effector and messed with the density, the scale, and the fluctuation, and I changed all the colors. In future videos, we'll hopefully be looking into how these work and customizing them more and just making them more versatile.